as we always do. Big sales! Right in the middle of the week, baby, we get news. Oh, I got a little message for Gardner Johnson. Oh, first and foremost, thank you for coming here. I appreciate it. You guys could go anywhere. And most of you moaners and social media assassins, you guys are idiots. But I welcome you. Now, let me put my Clark Kent glasses on so I could talk to all of you. Because big sales, you know, most of you get afraid of them. So I'll put my Clark Kent glasses on. Note to Gardner Johnson, okay? Hey, kid, you shit on the Eagle fans and your Eagle teammates. Now you're shitting on your Lions teammates and the Lions fans. Did you ever think it was your shitty attitude? Dude, let it go. Let it go. What are you doing? This guy's a bitch. I mean, you don't get your bat and ball. You start ripping everybody. This is a you thing. You got to, then he deleted his, I guess he went after the Lions fans and his teammates. He did the same shit to the Eagles and the Eagle fans. This guy doesn't have very good character. I'm convinced of it now. He has no character. He's low on character. Dude, I mean, why? What's the point? Everywhere you go, it's scorched earth. Oh, the Lion fans suck. My teammates suck. I guess you just put Eagles or Lions in there and it fits the narrative. I mean, the guy, without a doubt, I mean, what's the point? So he hates his team. Oh, now he loves his teammates, though, in Philly. He's such a liar. I don't believe him. He's not a very character or high character guy. Okay? The difference between me and Gardner Johnson talking shit, I don't change my opinion. And I don't talk shit on the Eagle fans. I don't talk shit on the Lion fans. The only way I talk shit on you is because when you're ill-informed. I don't attack you as bad people. Come on, dog. Give me a break. Unbelievable. You t- hey, you talk about a legendary flip-flopper. How about this guy? Eagle fans and Eagle teammates suck. I love them. I love them. Hey, I really love my teammates in the Lions when they gave him that $8 million deal. All of a sudden now, he hates them. Come on, guy. No one believes you anymore. No one believes you. Before we get going, oh, by the way, once again, congratulations to my guy, Josh Allen. He got rid of a cancer in the locker room. Good for you. You see, there's an organization that believes Josh Allen could carry a football team, unlike the guy in Philly, where you have to add Saquon Barkley. (laughs) Like, that'll help him. It won't. And before anybody goes crazy, you might want to see if the Bills get on a rookie contract or they make a trade for T. Higgins. What if they make a trade for T. Higgins on draft day? Then it was a Stefan Diggs deal. And they wanted him out because of his shitty attitude. Imagine this. They wanted him out in Minnesota because of his shitty attitude. Now they wanted him out. In Buffalo because of a shitty attitude. Two for two, guy. You got it going on here. Got it going on. Houston and Nick Casario killing it for sure. Don't worry. He'll run that thing off the rails like he does everything else he ever does, Stefan Diggs. 
So, hey, congratulations, Josh Allen. What a massive win. The organization thinks so highly of you, unlike the guy in Philly, where they could just get rid of a player and know that you're still with one of the greatest quarterbacks in the game. Unlike your guy, you got to keep adding. Pretty soon, what are you going to add next? Uh, uh, an all-pro fullback? I mean, pretty soon there's going to be nowhere else to put an all-pro in the eagle huddle for Hurts. Don't, don't worry, there'll be excuses. There'll be excuses. See, Josh Allen doesn't need a shitload of people. Hey, by the way, Correct me if I'm wrong. When they beat the piss out of the Cowboys, how many passes did they throw? Ten? They ran the ball down the Cowboys' throat? How many passes did they have in that game when they beat them 31-whatever it was? Ten? Josh Allen is such a superior quarterback to your boy, and it was on display today. Yes, sir. We don't need digs. We'll get a rookie, put a rookie on a rookie contract, get the same results. Diggs ain't that hot. He hasn't been the last two years. No biggie. Congratulations. How you doing? Absolutely, baby. Hey, by the way, Josh Allen loses to Patrick Mahomes. That guy loses to Baker Mayfield. Talk about a dynamic. <laughs> ah. Whoa, he's lost to Baker Mayfield and he's lost to Tyrod Taylor in the last two weeks of the season. C tremendous, tremendous. How you doing? By the way, oh, this is great. We got a ton of stuff to hit on. Just a ton of stuff. Hey, by the way, what, what was this? Josh also lost to Kirk Cousins, and you lost to Zach Wilson. Hey, by the way, it's a team deal. Hey, listen, you hang with a guy who's not as good as Josh Allen. I don't care. That's your boy. Go ahead. I don't want to debate it anymore. That's your guy. I can't stand that style of play, and I don't think he's that hot as – what they're trying to make him right now. I don't think he's that good. That's just where I'm at. Now, like I said, I'm not going to debate this again. The 22 hurts I do like. The 23 and what they want to do, I don't. He'll never be a good quarterback. Never. He's not having a bounce back year. He's not having a bounce back year. He's not. Get this. One more time here. Josh Allen could lead the NFL in, in turnovers and still win division titles and put his team in the playoffs and have a 700 win percentage. And the only thing your guy has over him is that he took his team to the Super Bowl, did um, Jalen Rex Grossman hurts. He's Rex Grossman. Okay, Allen lost to Hurts with the boneheaded interception. One guy versus all that, you better win. You're paying at least $120 million with all those guys on your team. Dude, Josh Allen has nothing. I don't want to debate it again. You have superior talent on offense to Buffalo, and you've had for the last three years. End of story. There's no getting around it. Way to go, Josh. The organization thinks so highly of you. They're moving off of him. And by the way, the Bills wanted to get rid of him so bad, it doesn't even affect this year's draft. That's how bad they wanted him out. Okay? They wanted him out. 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 Thanks, Barb. That would, yes, I got to give Barb. The credit for that. <laughs> Rex Hurts Grossman. <laughs> Absolutely. Kenny Pickett season. Kenny Pickett season. All right. I got to make a note before we get into the topics to the, um, to the NBA. 
and load management. You know what load management's code for? You don't care, I don't care. The women, Iowa and LSU generated 12.3 million people watching that thing. Kids who want to play, kids who are fighting to play, great storylines, and the NBA doesn't give a shit. You might want to take a note. Kids fighting, having fun. It's one of the great things about the NCAA tournament. You know what it is? You could tune on to shitty politics and listen to two old men fighting, and it's like, please give me a break. This is a comfort zone. That's what Caitlin Clark and um, Angel Reese brought to us. It was a comfort zone where everybody could just put everything away and go, it's sports. Good for you, man. Good for you, girls. That was That's tremendous. James, I root for Hurts because he's an eagle, but who honestly would take Hurts over Allen if a straight-up trade was offered? Hey, James, if you traded Jalen Hurts for Josh Allen, you'd have to give up Jalen Hurts and two ones to get Allen. That's not a straight-up trade. Nobody in their right mind would do that. Yeah, nobody. Only the idiotic people. Um, only the idiotic people in Philly think that shit. He's not that good. I think he's a good player. He is. Josh Allen good? No. No, 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 no. <laughs> and a little powder on the sidelines. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Hey, I, yeah, that guy Mark Holmes, man, he got his little panties in a bind. I can't believe the guy is so unbelievable. What do you call me names for? Shut up. You sound so ridiculous, but I get what you're saying. And no one is saying that her. Oh, my God. No, no, no. Melina, that's not true. People in here actually think Jalen Hurts is a better quarterback than that guy. He's not. He's absolutely not. He's Jalen Hurts has two 1,000-yard receivers around him, a top five tight end, a so-called what you call a, a feature back and the best O-line in football, and they lost seven games at the end of the year, six. Josh Allen is what the Eagles wanted once to be. Amen, Q. Bang. Woo. Absolutely. Hey, Barb, Mark Holmes. I had a, hey, I tried Wikipedia in them. Wikipedia doesn't even have a page on them. <laughs> uh, uh, look at Senor. Best O-line in football. You said the Eagles O-line was trash. You find that quote where I said that. At, lie. Never said it was trash. Who in their right mind with three pearl bowlers on it? Never said that. Never said that. Senor made that up. Fake news. Boom. That's the kind of guy Trump goes after right there. A senor. <laughs> senor, another internet assassin. Fake news. You belong covering China. <laughs> okay. Last year, when they sucked at protecting Hertz, well, they were third in blitzes. So they did struggle last year. You're welcome. You're welcome. The same guy said Swift wouldn't finish the year. Congratulations. First time in his five-year career he finished the season. And where was he the last six games of the year? Nowhere to be seen. Nowhere. <laughs> and that's why the Eagles didn't offer him. Oh, wait, they did. He said pound sand. Okay. Hey, oh, no. Hey, okay. Okay. Were you at Trader was better Bills versus Birds? Bills versus Birds. Um, Can you put that back up again? I mean, I'm going to have to get a Shohei Otani translator for that one. 
Where you at at trader was better bills versus birds. I'll have to get to the Shohei Otani translation of that, and I'll get back with you um, three days from now when we can decipher that. Okay? But I heard Holmes said Hertz was a number one quarterback ever. <laughs> but feels as much weight as the people say Hertz is better because of team accomplishments, beating Mahomes. Hey, James, amen. Josh Allen's was average before Diggs. Sure, average, right. And Hurts sucked before you loaded the team up. Yeah, he sucked too, right? So what, they put Diggs on the team and he got that good? You have two 1,000-yard receivers and fell apart. You put two 1,000-yard, which trade was better, Diggs? Or Reddick. I can't tell. I think they both suck. Because the teams aren't, the teams wanted the players out. Hey, think about this. You guys are saying Josh Allen is not going to be anything without Diggs, right? Jalen, what is he going to be without Devontae and AJ and Barkley and the old line and the seven Pro Bowlers you have? You got seven Pro Bowlers in the offense out of 11 guys. The Bills wanted them out. Boom! Your guy is average. My opinion, Jalen Hurts is an average quarterback until proven otherwise. Nice 2022 season. The other two, eh. Hey, but he has that one year and that Super Bowl play. Wow. He was really great in that L. <laughs> he was fantastic. By the way, isn't it great to go on the internet and watch all these so-called media guys try to dispute what Vic Fangio was promised to come to Philadelphia and become the defense coordinator? When I know this for a fact, when I talk to coaches on both the Eagles and the Dolphins. And yet you have some guy sitting in his mommy's panties with a binky in his mouth going, you guy's a liar. Got to be related to LJ. <laughs> hey, got to be related. Gotta be related. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Gotta be related. Nobody is disputing it with any kind of common sense. Nobody. Nobody. Let's move on. Okay. By the way, we're going to do something here today. Big Seal's top 10 college linebackers my ranking on potential players that the Eagles um, could land on one of these guys. I don't know what round. I do not believe unless they trade out of 22 that it's going to be their first pick in the draft. But I do have 10 guys. But here, I want to start the program out with one thing today. What's the one thing that the Philadelphia Eagles are missing right now on their team? Oh, Howard Cross, part of the broadcast team for the New York Giants, will join us at 4.30. Tony Saracusa, we're going to break down the NFL draft with him. That will be, last word on sports, that will be at 5.30 Eastern. How odd is it that Diggs's brother are just as different from one another as the two Barber brothers? Even Travis is a little odd, but not like those two sets of brothers. Calm down, Swifties. <laughs> it seems number one is giving up valuable picks this year. Um. Okay. 
What is the one thing the Eagles are missing right now? What's the one thing the Eagles are missing? Still. And by the way, James reminds me, all Super Chats go to the top. Thank you very much. Ooh, I see one of them. I see one of them. I see one of them. It's pretty close. I see I see one of them. And I don't think you're getting it back. You know what you're missing? Identity. You lost it with Kelsey's retirement. You lost it. You don't have an identity. Kelsey was your identity, not Jalen Hurts. Not the powder. You lost your identity with Kelsey's retirement. And that's why you're not getting it back. The one thing the Eagles are missing, play calling, head coach, to those saying Allen was average before Diggs, oh, okay, but he is significantly better off now. Completely, I agree. Josh Allen will be better off without Stephon Diggs. He'll be a better player because you know why? He'll do what he'll do what Mahomes did. He'll spread the ball around more, not have to worry about getting it to one meathead. That's what makes Mahomes better. Unlike Hurts, where he has to get the ball to two dudes, and mostly one dude, because you're not playing championship ball. Okay? When you have to get the ball to one meathead, okay, and now you get to spread it around, that's what makes championship football work. Okay? I think it was a young, I think it was a mistake for a young team in Houston, too. Not the right player. Absolutely. You bring in a headache and you bring a meathead in. That's not what that team needs. I don't, I don't think Houston, hey, Houston got better skill set wise, but as a meathead, not me. There's a reason Minnesota and Buffalo moved off him. He's a meathead. And they wanted out. Get this. The Bills didn't even give a shit if they got a pick for him this year and they got a two for him. That's how bad they wanted him out. He's a meathead. Same as AJ Owens. These guys are meatheads. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Now, I want to play championship po- football and spread it around. Josh Allen will be a better football player without him on that football team. It'll be better, and their cap will be better because they'll get more balance in the cap. Most people lo- look at it because, oh, Diggs is this. He's- Diggs is a meathead. Okay? He's a meathead. Okay? Here's the deal. Once again, you don't have an identity. So wait a minute. Who's going to bring the identity to the Philadelphia Eagles this year? What player? The push-tush is not Jalen Hurts. The push-tush is Jason Kelsey. He is the identity of the Philadelphia Eagles and has been probably for the last 10 years. Devontae can never you can never have a wide receiver as your identity of your football team. Name me one that is. Who? Tyree Kill? Well, there's your problem. If your leader is a guy who touches the ball five times a game, you got a problem. And by the way, people don't realize this. Okay? People don't realize this, okay? When Carson Wentz was with Jason Kelsey, they were 26-28 on the fourth and one play. It didn't really matter if it was Hurts or Wentz. It was successful with them. Calvin Johnson was the identity in Detroit. Yeah, one playoff win. Congratulations. That was a success. Not. 
Wide receivers are not identities of your team. That's why they don't win Super Bowls. All the big money wideouts, take a hike. You don't need them. Brady never needed them. Mahomes never needed them. Allen is not going to need them. I do like a little bit of what Houston got Joe Mixon, got Nico Collins. You got this meathead Stephon Diggs now. It's a pretty good looking offensive set if they can keep their head on straight. Barkley and Hurts are your identity. I can't wait to see that because I don't believe it. I don't think Hurts is that great a leader. Sorry, I don't. I just do not. Leadership was needed when you were one and six, and he was nowhere to be seen. I know it's the coaches. I know it's the coordinators. I know everyone quit around him except his majesty, King Hurts. I get it. I get it. I'm not as high on that guy as everybody else is in Philly. And quite frankly, there's a lot of people around the league going, we'll see. Okay. Barkley was tanking. Wait, wait, Barkley was tanking, and that's going to be your identity? Oh, I see. So he plays when he feels like it, just like the guy on defense you signed. So you've got two dudes that tanked their seasons last year, and you think those guys are high-quality guys. And the Devin White and Saquon Barkley. And they're going to come here when things are going south, or you have to have a moment where your team is balancing in the wind on whether it's going to have a successful season or not. You're going to believe those two guys with their character? Good luck. I'll take Hurts over those guys any day because those two guys, if they, if you're saying they laid down, hey, man, you should play ball whether you're 1-16 or you're 16-1. and one. You should never You should never play to your emotions. You play to your ability, always. Because you never want to have anybody ever say, hey, I'm just all about me. I'm all about winning. I'm going to give you everything I have. So you're telling me that Devin White – and Saquon Barkley tanked their seasons last year because they got their panties in a bind because the organizations didn't give them what they wanted. Congratulations to you. You got two losers on your team. That's what I'm saying, 11. Who picks the rope up? Who picks the leadership rope up that Mike Tomlin talks about all the time? Okay? Who picks the leadership rope? Hurts? He should. Makes $50 million. I doubt it. Who? Lane? Okay. You don't have an identity right now. Okay. So you're telling me Dan Marino was a shitty quarterback, but hurts to win more Super Bowls than Dan Marino. I'm not sure what that means. More people in here think that Jalen Hurts is as good a quarterback as Dan Marino because they each got to a Super Bowl together. So they would take Jalen Hurts over Dan Marino, which is absurd. Or, or this one, that you would take Jalen Hurts over Warren Moon because Moon didn't, Moon didn't get to a Super Bowl. It's absurd. It's absurd. Okay? Damn, you have no faith in Hurts. No. This version? No. No, I don't. Because your organization is ruining them. Like they did once. Yeah, no, right. Yes, it's true. If you would have kept expanding on what you did in 22, I'd have a different take with him right now. But what you're trying to do with him, never. He'll never be what he could have been. Same thing with McNabb stopping when he stopped running. He never did more than what he could have been because there was an element of him. Let me say this to you. That guy hung 60 points one time on a Miami Hurricane team, and I said this about Donovan McNabb. I don't know if I've ever seen a quarterback that has that kind of wheels, that elusiveness, and that kind of arm, and I thought he was better than Randall. But then when he decided to stop running and he wanted to be a pocket passer, he became average. That was a decision by him, though. 
that wasn't really, I don't know if that was with Andy or any of those other guys, but they took an element of his game away and he turned into an average guy after that. Lee caught up with him and he was traded. The Eagles thought so little of him, they traded him inside the division in the NFC. I mean, McNabb was spectacular at Syracuse. It was spectacular. Spectacular. Okay. You paid Hertz based on 22, yet take away the offense that got him there is insane. Dual threat? Xander, put that dual threat up. Please. Please put the dual threat guy up here. That dual threat, you paid Hertz based on 22. Dude, that right there is why he'll never win. Dual threat is dead on. That's it right there. Instead of, hey, dual threat, think of this. Instead of expanding how great he was in 22, they decided to change what they did in 22. Why? Because they're more concerned about him getting hurt than winning. Hence, the record. They had a worse year last year. All around in a hurry, one of the worst finishes in Eagle history. You could make the argument that was the worst finish to an Eagle team in Eagle football history. Dual goes, it's not fair to Hurts. You see, what they want to do, Dual, is this. They want Jalen to be in that uniform for 10-plus years. I don't give a shit about that. If Hurts puts you in Super Bowls four years of six and they win two, it was worth it if he gets hurt. It would have been worth it. But if you put him in and he only goes to one Super Bowl and he remotely never gets to what he could have been, it's a failure. Let me say this to you. If Jalen Hurts has a down year this year, that $255 million contract will begin to look like a failure deal. That's right, Stevens. Hurts wasn't a leader at Bama. He wasn't the leader of that Bama team. He's never been a leader anywhere he's played. Maybe Oklahoma. Kellen Moore's good forecast of what Lori and Howie want. Okay, you're damn right. They want him to throw the ball like Dak. Okay, that's less running of the quarterback. They got Barkley for a reason, dude. Not to run Hurts more. They're telling you he's not going to be in an RPO situation. They may have a few run designs, but dude, Barkley is not the threat that Hurts is in the run game. He's not. Go back to 22. Was it his passing that wowed you, or was it the fact that he was so elusive on third and long? Okay. Barb, that's okay. Listen, most people, or some, there's only like five or six dummies that are trying to make a, a, a an argument over stupid shit. And they know they're wrong. Because he was, I mean, get this. It's not so much he was second in the NFL in turnovers. It's the nuclear Chernobyl meltdown they had at the end of the year where he was lost. Because guess why? He's horrible on blitz pickup. He was terrible. He was third worst in the league. He can't handle internal pressure, which means he can't step up in the pocket, which means the passes are high, which leads to high turnovers. And now you got a new center and a new coordinator? Good luck. I want to see that play out. I don't believe it. I do not believe it. I don't think – you guys thought there was going to be some easy-ass transition last year. With the coordinators. I can't wait to see Cam Jurgens take over for for Lane. I mean for um for Jason. I think Cam's okay, but he's not that. He won't be 70% of Jason Kelsey. Um, Eagles have an identity. I think D coordinator respects this offense too much talent. Respects what offense that went one and six down the stretch? How do you respect that? 
You respect that at that team laying down the way it did. Hey, one thing about the coaches sucking. What about the players' accountability? I'm sick and tired of people blaming coaches for everything. Players get paid too, dude. Where were the players in that? Where's the players' accountability and laying down like dogs? New offense. Why is it a new offense, senor? I want the old offense, the 22 offense. Right there, senor, just makes it even more of a hammer point for me. That guy will never win again the way he did in 22. New offense? New offense? I don't want a new offense. I want the offense that had him second in the MVP voting. That's the offense I want. Don't you? Is that how you looked at each game those guys sucked last year? I'm not going to prepare for this team. Bradbury was there taking accountability for getting burnt every snap. Yeah, because when they were putting him in press coverage, something that he was not able to do, why would you put a guy in a position to fail? You know why? Organizational. Upstairs. Good night. Dang, we only played seven games last season. That's crazy. No, but you, you put the seven games were dictating the NFC East and home field advantage, guy. Those were the seven that mattered, not the 10 and one. The seven and the one and six mattered most. It was a, get this, look at what Fitness Warrior just is trying to tell you on how idiotic and stupid that guy is. Wow, we only played seven games. Inside of those seven games, you had a playoff game that you got crushed in. You lost home field advantage and you lost the NFC East in it. But he wants to toot and root about 10 and 1. Dude, idiotic. Idiotic. Hey, and by the way, with all this talent that you're paying for, you have dick to show for it. Remember I told you this two years ago, all this money you're spending? If you don't win a Super Bowl this year, you would have spent $60 million on A.J. Brown. Was it worth it? Knowing that your defense is in shambles because of salary cap issues. If you have A.J. Brown and he goes and has another 1,400-yard season, and you paid him $20 million this year, $25 million. And you would have paid him two, four, yeah, $65 million. Was it worth it? You know what, my, you know what people are going to say? Yes. And I'm going to go, would you win with it? What did you win with it? Accolades? Sam. Sales, how could anyone think last year wasn't a complete embarrassment to this city? Because, you get this, they don't want to admit it. You see, you got, you got guys like AJ who think Sirianni's a better coach than Doug Peterson and won't change that narrative and would rather have Sirianni lead his football team than a guy like Doug who led you to a Super Bowl with a backup quarterback and won no matter who was in there. Let me ask you this. You think LJ's guy, Nick Sirianni, could lead Marcus Mariota to a Super Bowl win or to a Super Bowl period? Do you think he could have led him to a Super Bowl, Nick Sirianni? Do you? Do you think Nick Sirianni, if Jalen Hurts goes down, can lead Kenny Pickett to a Super Bowl? Do you? Do you believe that? Nobody in their right mind believes that. Only people who don't want to change their stupid take believes that shit. Told you before, players dictate how you cover them. I'm not a fortune teller. You're, I talk about who you are now. That's why most of the time, I don't even know what I said yesterday. 
All Nick does is take his team to postseasons. All Nick does is rebuild. Out of the Chip Kelly disaster, he took a team to a Super Bowl and won with a backup. He's now in Jacksonville. And people are like this. Hey, look at the finish they had. Yeah, their quarterback was banged up. They're trying to turn something around, and it's Jacksonville. The armpit of the NFL. He'll win a Super Bowl before Sirianni will because Sirianni won't be the head coach. I'm glad to see some people in here have such tiny standards that you'll hang on bullshit narratives like, hey, we've won a lot the last three years. No, you haven't. Pro football is not about how many regular season wins you have. It's about how many championship appearances and wins you have. That's the that's the barometer. Nobody gauges LeBron James and Michael Jordan. On get this, LeBron James is the all-time leading scorer in NBA history. But almost to a man, they still say Jordan's the greatest player. Why? He ain't four and six in the postseason. There's a difference. You know, Mahomes was asked the question about being compared to Brady. He goes, I'm not even halfway there yet. That's a guy who sees the finish line, not the start gate. That's a guy who knows. I've got a long way to go for that. And I could make this argument to you. That's the greatest talent that's ever played the position. Coach Johnson says that. I've never seen a guy play the position like Patrick Mahomes. He's the greatest athlete ever to play the position. It's insane ambidextrous, doesn't need anybody on his team, affordability for his franchise when it comes to not having to pay running backs or receivers, and you're still beating teams. The difference and the distance between the Chiefs and the, and the Eagles is a Grand Canyon wide. Grand Canyon wide. You've got to spend and overspend money just to compete with them, and they don't. They don't. They don't have to spend the money. And that's what Buffalo's gambling on. That is totally what Buffalo's gambling on. Hey, by the way, you don't know if they don't go and trade for T. Higgins, like I said. Or they want to get on a rookie contract. I think one of the great things now with these rookie wide receivers that are coming into the draft, there's a bunch of good ones. I think the Bills are looking at it like this. I'd rather not have the headache of that meathead Stefan Diggs in my huddle anymore. I don't want to hear the crying and the bullshit. This is two places now he's been run out of town. And so they got rid of the meathead. And they'd rather have a rookie on a rookie contract. This is, again, what I told you about the Jalen Rager deal. It wasn't so much that you missed on the player. You missed on the equity. And the equity is being played out by A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown is the cover of the mistake. You know what that is? You got to pay $60 million. That's a $60 million mistake that you made, and he was the best player in his position in the league. That's a catastrophic disaster for Howie. And the reason you have $60 million, and with this year completed, you'll have $65 million that you would have spent in one player with no results except for his own personal numbers. Speaking of Chip Kelly, could Eagles be making a similar mistake with Fangio handling all aspects while not having the personnel just like Kelly? Um, See, here's James, here's the only difference that I would say is that Vic's been in the NFL game a lot longer than Chip was ever. And I don't think Chip understood the NFL talent, whereas Vic's been in the game a long time. I think he understands prototype, and that's what he's looking for, is more prototype. Will you challenge Mark Holmes to a debate? I'll treat him like Trump treats those other Republicans. Why would I do that when I'm so far ahead? I have no interest in shit like that. Give me somebody I know. No, thank you. Hey, I don't, I don't debate people who are trending at 1%. No, I don't, 
No, thank you. Um, Sills, Buffalo needs a number one wide receiver after trading Diggs. How good would AJ look on the field with Allen? I I, I think Allen's going to be a better player without Stefan Diggs. AJ and a 120 and 28 and number 60, how he might screw up the picks. That that to me is the big issue. Okay? That to me is the bigger issue. Eagles have to win with ball control on turnovers. Um, do you think we still see A.J. Brown traded for a top cornerback or a trade up? I don't. I I, I don't. Okay? I, I mean, my God almighty. Jalen Hurts has every single thing handed to him right now. If that guy can't win the Super Bowl this year with that offense, he should be fired. There's not a quarterback in the NFL outside of Brock Purdy. But the only difference is Brock Purdy's not making $55 million. The organization as a whole failed last year's sales. The reason the fans blame the coaches is because it's the easy way out. Of course, can't blame the players. That's why I tell you all the time when you're talking about hitting instructors or batting coaches for baseball players, guy goes for an 0 for 17 slump. It's the hitting coach. How about the guy that's at the plate in the box? What about him? Where's his accountability? How about the one at seven? Oh, I love my coach so much, but you quit for him. Oh, I see. You're double talking. You're absolutely double talking. Okay? Josh Allen won't miss digs. Nobody will. You know why? They've proven that they beat the shit out of teams without digs. Diggs had no catches in that Cowboy game. None. I don't even, with the Diggs play in that game? I'd be curious. Hey, somebody, do me a favor. Somebody pick, uh, put up Stefan Diggs' numbers in that, um, in, in that, um, hey, do me a favor too. I'd like to know. I forget. Put the numbers up in the Eagle game and put the numbers up in the Cowboy game that the Bills played this year. I'd be curious to see what Diggs did in both games. I've, he may have had a good game against the Eagles. I don't remember that. Put the numbers up. I'd like to see what he did in those games. I would. Okay? Dude, well, all I remember in that all I remember in that um Buffalo game was that they ran the shit out of the ball and they didn't even really need to beat the Cowboys with a passing game. They threw the ball 10 times. Okay? Somebody put up what Diggs did in the Eagle game and in the Cowboy game. I'd be interested. <laughs> so, so get this. So Josh Allen had one of his best years with Stephon Diggs. A.J. Brown had one of his best years, his best year. He had a career year, and yet you sucked. And Hurts melted down at the end of the year. What's he get you? What's he get you? Cowboys, he had four catches for 48 yards. What, what did he have in the um, – uh, thank you, CJ. CJ, what did he have in the um, six catches, 74 yards in the Eagle game? And Josh Allen had 500 yards in total offense. <laughs> yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Josh Allen had 500 yards in total offense in that Eagle game, and he had 74 of it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Six catches, 74 yards, and Josh Allen had combined seven, 502 yards in total offense. Whew, he was a huge factor. A huge factor. And it was just him and him and him. And you had all that talent, and you took him out in overtime at home. Congratulations. You think Hurts could play with nobody? Absolutely not. He stinks. 
If if Jalen Hurts was on the Buffalo Bills, Xander, what would the record be? What do you think the record would be if Hurts was on that Bills team with one guy? Six and eleven? <laughs> Six and eleven. Hertz is hurt. Three and 14. <laughs> Look at this. Hertz was injured. Oh, my God. The coaches suck. He's injured. Play calling stunk. The play design stunk, but not your guy. Holy shit. I can't believe a city like Philadelphia actually has meatballs that are in that city that have excuses for people that fail. It's so stunning that I'm really there's an epiphany going on. Not all of you believe that, and I know that. But some of you are just idiotic. Sills, the way you talk shit on the Eagles is crazy, but it's the truth. <sighs> you put it that way, it sucks. <laughs> hey, Philly Tupelo, James Cook beat the Cowboys. Hey, hey. You put Philly 007. You put it that way, it sucks. It does, man. Joe Brady would use Jalen Hurts the right way. Sure, he would. What way would be that? Oh, okay. Wait a minute, Warrior. You mean he used him like 22? Okay. Well, we're talking different now. Okay. You mean. Brady would go, Joe Brady would go back to 22. Okay. All right. Hey, 007, thank you, man. Okay. Dan, do you think LJ's an idiot? No, he's just a shit talker. It's all good. Who's not? He's a CJ Gardner Johnson of the Big Sill Show slash National Football Show. That's who he is. He's the Gardner Johnson. He doesn't know what he likes. You said Diggs was getting traded right again, baby. How you doing? Remember I told you he was getting traded? That's right. Way to go. 304 with the memory like an elephant. Look at that. You're right. I said Diggs would get traded before June 1. Did I not? Yeah. I said he might even get traded before the draft. Right again. Bang. Big sales strikes again. <laughs> Big Sills strikes again. How you doing? How you doing? Who took him, Sills? Houston. <laughs> okay. Big Sills with the two-step. <laughs> How you doing? You got it, man. I told you they'd get rid of that guy. They weren't going to keep that dude on the team. I told you they weren't keeping him on the team. Flexing. Remember I told you? Nick Casario's killing it down in Houston. He's changed the culture around. Hey, Barb, big sales, big sales, big sales. Come on, big Oh, geez, the gun's looking big, too. Big sales. Look at that gun, man. Holy cow. Woo! Hey, big sales, big sales, big sales. Uh, you're wrong about Sirianni? Really? He's a cheerleader. Uh, <laughs> oh, he just took digs. That's a big culture move. Yeah, well, I don't think the I don't think that's gonna that's not a, I don't like the move. I think he's the wrong player, like Xander said, for that team. Wait. So Sil said. Burrow getting traded before the 2025 season? Don't start making shit up, young man. I said he may be hurt. NFC East prediction. I don't know yet. I got to see the draft. There's Dick Track. Look at him. Sills is an idiot. That's what Matt does. Come on, Dick Track. You got to come a little harder than that. Okay. <laughs> come on, man. Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. Hey. <laughs> What 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 is what did he say, Senor? Do the uh, Trump dance? No, here I'll do the Biden dance.
<laughs> Here's the Biden dance. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Hey, thank you for sports. <laughs> oh man. For the last three years, every quarterback, good or bad, is kicking ass against the Eagles. Of course they are. <laughs> Josh Allen was nothing before digs. <laughs> yeah. And hey, and Jalen Hurts was nothing before AJ, Devontae, Lane, Jason Kelsey, Landon Dickerson, Jordan Mulata, Dallas Goddard. He was nothing before them guys. <laughs> hey, you want me to do the Trump dance? China. How did Jalen make the playoffs with that terrible 2021 offense? If he sucks, he was the caboose on that team. He got beat by Brady and a great Super Bowl defense. He was the caboose on that team. Guy threw for what? 3,400 yards and 22 touchdowns. Shit, man. There's, hey, what was, who is he? JJ McCarthy? JJ McCarthy? Look at her. Look at her down there. Look at her. Great family. Great ass. I mean, great, great. Hey, great assets I met. <laughs> I meant to say great assets. Not great ass. Don't hold me to that, but they'll put it out there. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm going to get into the top 10. My top 10 linebackers, because I think this is an area that they're going to really isolate on. And the upcoming, I meant great assets, Benji. I didn't mean great ass. I meant great assets. <laughs> Bills did the old addition by subtraction move. Absolutely. They're going to be better without Diggs. Josh Allen didn't throw for more than 4K until Diggs. Well, wait a minute. He's got one guy, you got two guys, and he can't throw for four. But he's better. Hang on. Thank you for that. He didn't. Wait a minute. That guy just said that Josh Allen didn't throw for 4,000 yards until they got Diggs. Well, what's Hertz's excuse? He said two years of two guys having two 1,000 yard seasons in the same year, and he can't throw for four grand and 30 touchdowns. What's his problem? What's his problem? He's got two of them. He's got two. And he had a thousand yard back. Oh, Nick. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. It's Nick. Why would you bring up four grand? You know, still is going to. RTS got a smirk on his face. Why would you throw that at him like that and tee that up for him like that? Right. Hey, RTF is like, why would you tee that up for him? <laughs> Hoss, when you're in this room, you got to be a professional because this guy, RTF just did it, all right? Hey, MG2, dude, you got to be smart in here. <laughs> dude, man, he put that on the T. Hey, he put that on the T for me, right? It's like T-ball, right? Hertz will never throw for four grand. He's not good enough. 
<laughs> Don't Xander dance. We'll shut the show off again. <laughs> yeah. Dude, the only way to... Hey, Xander will do a dance soon. I think he's in a better place now. Okay? He's been very, very um, upbeat over the last couple days. So it's good. Des the Hebrew. Shalom. How about you tell the people his total yards? Dual threat reminder. You never add his rushing yards to the equation. Hey, Des, the Hebrew, it would also be nice if you reminded the Eagles of those numbers. I happen to agree with you. I happen to agree. Why are the Eagles forgetting that? Why are the Eagles forgetting that? Hey, D Washington, Jalen will throw for 4,000 yards if you put the RPO back in. He, he will. He, he does this. He got two 1,000-yard receivers, and he can't throw for 30 touchdowns, and he's nowhere near it. Jalen has never even gotten close to 30 touchdowns. How is that possible with two players that have gone? One guy's almost got three grand. The other guy's got, get this. You got two receivers in the last two years that have totaled 5,000 receiving yards. And get this. Jalen Hurts hasn't thrown for four grand yet or 30 touchdowns. How's that possible? How's that possible? MVP this year didn't have 30 total touchdowns. Hey, you're missing the gosh dang point, Corey. The Eagles don't want to have total anything. He had 30 touchdowns total. Nobody gives a shit. The Eagles don't even care. They don't want him to have 30 touchdowns total. They don't want him to run the ball. That's why they just went out and got your boy Barkley. Dude, the way I feel right now about your guy is what they're doing with him. Personally, I think they're wrecking him. Cedric Gray, UNC. James, it's a great reminder. He's got alignment issues, but strong. Zone cover, his DC was Gene Chizik, who I know from his time at Auburn was always a strong DC dating back to San Francisco. Plus, Gary played Tampa, too. We're going to do that next, James. James, thank you, by the way, for that. That's really cool. We are going to look at my top 10 linebackers that are going to be in the draft and maybe one of these guys could land in Philadelphia. So we will look at these guys. Hit the like button. Don't forget, Howard Cross, part of the New York Giants broadcast team, former Giant himself, is going to join us at 4.30 Eastern. Tony Saragusa, last word in college sports, will be with us at 5.30. We're going to break down the NFL draft. I think these quarterbacks. I'm, oh, by the way, I'm going to show you something about the quarterbacks that have been drafted. And I'm going to show you how difficult it is to try to find one of these guys. It's crazy. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show.